Yo, it is Stocks and Bars. We're going to talk about time. We're going to talk about some hacks, some management strategies, and we're going to continue on with my circle of friends. The Empower Empire. Let's go. I got my clicks ready to use the money they got from jobs and courage and teaching them that it's not so hard. I'm doing this, making investing pop. You law is extra. You tuning in to Stocks and Bars. Yo. Stocks and Bars podcasts are here. So, we're going to break this one down here. Today, who I have with me, I got a guy that I've known since about 2003. And this guy, we have been friends since the very moment we met. I didn't know it at the time, but I was gifted a very special friend. And I'm so thankful for this guy. We have had a, let's say not a separation, but there was a point in time in our lives where we didn't communicate and we picked up right where we left off with no missing pieces at all in our lives. And every time I talk to this guy, he inspires me to be more than I am. He knows exactly where I'm at. <laughs> he can feel my energy. And it's just awesome, man. This guy is on the same level. And we always elevate each other. And I appreciate it. Socks and bars, ladies and gentlemen. I want to bring to you my friend. One of my best friends. Bakari Brown. What is going on, man? Hey, man. That intro. That intro was amazing, man. And likewise. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Wise. Yeah, As man, I was just I'm telling glad. you before we got started, man, today is a special day for me, man. My son, August, is three. And this morning, we're going to his first soccer practice. Like, not only is it his first soccer practice, but it's his first practice at anything ever this morning. You know awesome. what I mean? So it couldn't be a better time to connect with you, man. Uh, one of the things since we've always like known each other, you've always put family first. You didn't let anything like distract you, you know what I mean, at different parts of your lives, like more certain things are more important than others. And you've always been even killed. So I knew you would appreciate more than probably anybody else the importance and significance of this day right here. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Thank you, brother, for coming on the podcast, man. No doubt, man. No doubt. I'm glad to be here, man. I'm proud of what you're doing. Thank you. All right, so we're going to talk about something that's sacred. We're going to okay. talk about time. A lot of right. people have difficulty with time. And I know you and I, we've had some, some ways that we can master it as best as we can because we, we own it. We know what it is. We know when we're in those moments. And we know how to capitalize. So you're the perfect guest <laughs> to talk about this one, man. So let's share with the ladies and gentlemen some time hacks, some management strategies, you know, some good ways that you can get through your day so you can try to handle it a little bit better. Let's try to give them like one or two that you use on a daily basis that helps you. Okay. Uh, first off, to frame it, I think like the recognition that it's finite is most important, right? It's the one thing that's exhaustible. You'll never get any of it back. At the end of your run in this in this life, you're gonna look back and I think that the things that you're going to realize at the end of your journey were times and moments either spent or misspent. So that's first. Second, I get up earlier than everybody in my house every day. Right. I, I need that time to frame out my day. So get up earlier. Right. So on average, I'm probably 630. Right. Earlier in my life, I got up earlier than that. But now it's 630. We can read that. At that point, I tune into something that I enjoy, something that's motivational, inspirational, something to just get that energy going and make sure that I'm I'm where I need to be because, you know, you're also the captain of your ship. Right. So depending on your mood, 
everybody else's mood is going to be somewhere around there, right? So when it comes to time for me, recognizing that it's finite, um, getting up earlier, having that moment to myself, I don't feel, I don't like to feel like I'm rushing to like I'm five minutes late to everything because if I start that way, the rest of the day kind of cascades that way. So earlier, focusing on what's important and remembering to have fun, like at whatever it is you're doing, like that's time for me. That's that's what it's about. Yeah, man, I share the same sentiment. Obviously, um, some of the hacks that I use is like you said, recognizing that time and owning it, right? I realized the same exact thing where we got 24, okay? That's all you got. You gotta maximize that 24 as much as you can. So I get up six o'clock, I try to get up about, <laughs> my daughters usually get up around seven. So that gives me about my hour, right? Right, the hour is important. <laughs> so I got my hour, right? Fit in what I can, and hold on, hold on. Okay, so I got a calendar, right? I got a physical calendar. Here we go. Yeah, this this is my baby. I try to tell great minds. Yeah, great minds, right? Yeah. So I got everything written down. I try to write down what I want to do for my next day. Have that done. If I got something planned out for the week, all that's already filled out. That lets me know where I'm at. Helps me manage it as best as I can, man. So we on the same as usual, man. Beat. As usual. Beat. Now, let, <laughs> let me ask you this. When it comes yeah. to your calendar, how detailed are you? Are you, okay, these are the five things that I've got to get done today, or are you 6.30 to 7 is going to be this? 15 minute break in between 7 15 and 8 30 is going to be this like are you that micro with your details on your calendar i don't get that micro i know people block it but i write down important moments sure because i like to recall what days i don't like when i go dang i don't remember when that happened and wow. the pandemic was infamous for that because everything was just blended together yeah. So I try to write down on those days what happened. Like, for instance, yesterday, my daughter's right. third tooth came out, right? Oh, man. You're right That's noted, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's in there. <laughs> so, yeah, stuff like that, I try to remember. So when I want to recall it, I can go back and say, if I have a, a tough time, I can be like, all right, yeah. Here's yeah. Right there. Yeah. So um yeah, for you, brother, I had to write this one down, right? Because you okay. that kind hey, of man, look, I appreciate this, man. <laughs> I, I really do. And and like I said, man, I'm proud of you. I know this probably ain't the form, and you're not gonna want to hear this because you're such a humble guy, but I'm proud of you the way that you're you've had tunnel vision on your goals, right? And a lot of times people can tell you, y'all want to make a lot of money. I'm not going to sleep until I do it. I'll rest when I'm dead. You know what I mean? Like, in at different points in, like, my own journey, I, I fell victim to that, too. But, like, right. for you, you've always been even killed. You've always knew what was important, right? Time, people, um, money, too. You've never, like, as long as I've known you, that's never been far from center point, but it was never the center point. So that's why I think you're the perfect person to have this podcast, right? Because I think you're going to educate people on how to do it, when to buy, sell, all of that kind of stuff, but also how to live, like how to really live your life. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm, I'm here to contribute to that part. Absolutely. Because what I've understood over time is where you at right now is everything you've done last year. So all the work you put in at that point in time, you're living that moment. And that's what your future is, man. It's your current present. 1000%, man. You are like your experience is the sum of your, your ideas and the right. energy that you put into it. Like what are the dominating thoughts in your mind? That's what's going to present themselves in your life. You know what I mean? And then also fears. Like if you spend your time afraid of something, okay. guess what? You're going to face it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, coming at you. Clinical, like the subconscious computer doesn't understand like action verbs, right? Like if you're like poverty, ah, I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be poor. All your subconscious computer hears is poor, right? That's it. 
poor. So you're going to face that. So like whatever the dominating thoughts are in your mind, as you're spending your time, that's what you're going, you're manifesting that. Right. Right. So if it's happiness, if it's joy, that's what it's going to be. It's money. That's what it's going to be too. But you're going to give up something for something. Right. Yeah. Like, in order to get, in order to receive, you must give, right? Absolutely. So be careful what it is that you're telling yourself that you want because that's going to present itself. You and I have been on this 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 plane since the beginning, right? I'm interested to know, like, is there a moment in your life that sparked this or is this just something that when you was like four, you was like, this is me? Um... Uh, you gotta be like you gotta be a bit more specific, right? Because I think that growing up, I had enough time to really be a child, yeah. which was so important, right? Like, I had the type of childhood to where I didn't have to worry about whether the lights were still gonna be on at the end of the at the end of the month. I didn't have to worry about is there gonna be enough food, right? Yeah. So, like, when you remove that, then you could. Whatever it is you're into, whether it's Transformers, I got to go all the way with that, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then at some point early on, I appreciated making my own money, right? Yeah. And I'm talking about maybe around nine. And it wasn't for a need. It was a want, right? Like, so, yeah. for instance, early one of my early memories when it comes to cash is so my parents split when I was young. My dad lived on the west side, I lived on the east side, right? Okay. When I would go over there, my older brother, stepbrother, but older brother, he had a different mentality, man. This dude was cool. And when I say cool, I mean cool, nothing radical. But the point of the matter is he was sleep late, right? I've always been kind of an early riser, he would sleep in. And so around the corner from their house was a grocery store. And so I would wake up in the morning, I would go over to the grocery store and I would push carts. For whatever reason, this was fun to me. Like I would go and I would, I would make myself useful. I would bring carts in. I'd help people with their groceries or whatever. I'd get changed. I remember to this day, a bagger, I mean, the guy who actually worked there gave me a dollar bill for this. Like went in his pocket, gave me a dollar. That meant a lot to me because like I made that, I earned that. And so when my brother would wake up and we would go spend our day, like, you know, hop on the bikes and ride up to the baseball card store, all of that kind of kid stuff, I could reach into my own pocket and I could buy that pack of baseball cards, right? I remember the look on his face when we went into convenience. And I was like, yo, you want that? And I got, yeah, put that up there too, right? <laughs> and what that felt like for me was, because he looked like, how'd you get money? Like, don't worry about that. <laughs> right? And so like early on for me, like the importance, it wasn't out of need and necessity. It was out of like I liked the way that it made me feel. Yeah. And I was able to pull at that thread more or less throughout the rest of my journey, you know, today. Yeah. 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 So my my experience was this. It was fifteen. Okay. I first started getting money. I took the lawnmower and I went around the neighborhood and I used to cut grass okay. and I would go and I'd knock on the door and I'd tell them, Hey, you know, would you like your grass cut? They'd be like, all right. I charged them $10. Okay. That 10 was usually 20. Cause every time when I got paid, they gave me a 20 and they said, keep the change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they respected the hustle. So on the real, I was making like 60 an hour. Right. Wow. And I was 15. So I would go, I go to the PX, I go get my own jeans, I get my CDs, I get fresh, I get yeah. whatever I wanted, you know? And I, I like that independence that I could just do what I needed to do. And I had it, you know? So now at what point did you look at money as capital? Like, did you start looking at it instead of, yo, I got this 60 for this past hour, I'm about to go get fresh, as opposed to if I put this into something, then I could create a machine that will continue to do this while I do something else. 19. 19, okay. 
Talk to me about that. All right, so it was 19, and at the time I had three jobs. And I was DJing, and I worked at FedEx, and I worked at Kids R Us. And I remember the moment where I was taking my brother out to get, you know, his clothes and all that. And I remember feeling the same way, but I was like, I'm chasing. Like, I can't ever get more money unless I go work three of these, three of these jobs. Yeah. And so that's when I actually started trying to do the whole rap thing. Because I figured, all right, I need a vehicle that's going to be able to, to go out there, make money while I go do something else. And that's when it, it snapped for me. And then I eventually transitioned that rap stuff to the investments and you know, that's that's what we do. I think that's an interesting connection, man, because I think a lot of people have those those aspirations when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to sports. And I like the way that you continue to thread from, all right, this happened first, then I started doing this, but I started doing this so it could lead me to that, right? I think for me, like, again, it comes back. It's funny. It comes back to my brother because as you were talking about 19, I was thinking, uh, what was I doing at 19? So my brother wanted to be an artist, right? And he had found a guy that invested in him, was buying him studio time, and he was making really good music that people were vibing to. It. I wanted to be a part of that because for me at this time, this was the time of Master P, No Limit Records, right? And that meant a lot to me because, okay, I'm going to try to do what my brother's doing. He's really good at it. I'm not. I'm aware of that, right? I'm aware of that. But then you see a master P, and he's not good at it either. But it's working for him, right? And so, like, for me, I was able to identify and find that particular lane. So it's like, okay, how can I add value to this situation that's already happening? How can, like, what are the unique skills and talents that I have? And for me, it was relentlessness. It was, I can take this, or like, you're going to get tired before I get, right? And I'm willing to play myself for this. What I mean by that is I hang out backstage at a, at a place. I'll get there. I'll talk my way into it. I don't mind being, like, the intern guy, Right. So for me, that was my like journey into that space to where I wanted to build something, to create something. And um, along that, around that time, I discovered Jay-Z's music, right? And I remember Jay had a bar where he said, without, ra without rap, I'm crazy straight. But I'm still spending money from 88. And that, kind of, that was 96. So that concept to me was... Because at that time, you know, I'm 19 years old. We're going into nightclubs and stuff like that. And we're spending the la I'm spending the last bit of money that I had. Now, I've got a job. I've got a paycheck coming in, so I'm not broke forever. But from now to the next check, I'm done. <laughs> I've got nothing left. <laughs> and so when this man said that he was eight years into something, something clicked for me to where, okay, that's cool. Right? It's not cool to spend all of your money. It's not cool to be dependent upon something else. What's cool is old money. It's having money that you haven't touched. And, and so I wanted to see what that was like. And so I pulled at that thread from, okay, Jay-Z, Rockefeller Records, right? Okay, Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, Cleveland. I'm in Cleveland, right? So I started pulling at that thread and I started reading about John D. Rockefeller, the creation of Standard Oil, and it just blew my mind, right? And part of it was for the information and part of it was for show because around the time that we met, like I had started an internship at Def Jam. Like I was the college rep for Akron, but then got to go out there and spend time there. So I'm walking around the office with Titan by Ron Sherno, which was the John D. Rockefeller biography, right? It's like a thousand some pages, it's a huge book. And I'm purposely walking around the offices with this book, differentiating myself. But as I pulled at that thread and I saw what monopolies were, what it was like to found a business, to spawn other things and create generational wealth, I just got hooked. 
And so same way that you were just describing, started with music and then I got to the investments. For me, it was look at my brother, follow my brother, identify different people along the way and just keep going. And so yeah, I'm still doing now, man. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about uh, the pandemic too, the blessings of it, because I think the pandemic did everybody a favor by hitting everybody upside the head and letting everyone know, yo, you gotta own your time. Because at that point, everybody was just on a go, 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 just doing just whatever they can to get to the next destination, not realizing that this time that's passing, so many things you could have taken advantage of. Everybody wastes their Monday through Friday just wishing for the weekend. And you got two days. I like to take the approach of obviously capitalize on every day. I think wasting your five days is your biggest waste of time. I just want to know your opinion out of your life. What is the moment that you realize, yo, I'm wasting this time. I need to capitalize. Hmm. That's a good one, man, because ju just the level set, I've been working from home since 2004, okay. right? Is a switch that happens when you walk, work from home. Because one, there's a recognition of, I can work 24 hours every day, seven days a week, and never finish all of the things that I have to do. Right. That's realization number one, right? Two, it's not framed out between... I got to be there by nine and I got to, you know, won't get off till six. Right. So it's a bit, it's a different mentality. So when you're talking about giving five days for two, I never liked that. That was just like, it, it was an inequitable split to me distribution. Right. So fortunately was able to take some action on that and be here. So my reality with time is a little bit different because one, my job, like what I do for a living where I spend most of my professional time isn't just to trade off my time for cash and capital. Like I really believe in what we're doing. I'm a part of something, right? Yeah. I'm a part of something. Like I'm a part of this intergenerational relay race with education. Like for instance, we're working with the American Indian Higher Ed Consortium, right? They've got 36 tribal colleges and universities. We are providing evidence-based pedago pedagogical instruction. We're proven to improve outcomes, student grades, uh, retention, close equity gaps, help people live better lives. So I'm a part of that, right? So the time that I spend, one, I'm doing it from home. Two, I'm a part of something that's bigger than me, right, that I believe in. And, you know, the cash is, is okay, right? So... I don't feel as though I'm giving more than I'm receiving, right? Yeah. So I'm a part of it. I get up when I want to. It's just fortunate that I want to get up at 6.30, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I do something that I believe in with people that I respect. And it's a nice pace of it, right? It's a nice pace of it. So I don't agree. Like if you're doing something just for the sake of I need this cash or I'm giving this time, it's not enough time for me and my family at the end of it. Like I can respect the person doing what you have to do because you have to do it. But on that same line, you got to find a better way. You got to work on something to where that's not the case. Right. Right. You got to work on something to where that's not the case. So that's, that's some beautiful messages for people, man. Like if you put your time in, it's definitely going to work out for you. So last question I got for you, right? Okay. The difficulties that I ran into with time was trying to make sure I didn't alienate myself because, you know, we could go into this grind and we could see ourselves, and like you said, the tunnel vision, right? But when you got the tunnel vision, the disadvantage to that is that things happen around you and you're not aware. So I want to share one of the time hacks that I got to try to help anybody else who may be running into that. Now, what I do is I try to combine. So like with this podcast, for instance, when I do the editing and stuff like that, my daughters will often be with me 
while mm-hmm. I do it. When I do my chart reads, they with me. They're yeah. submersed in it with me and I'm exposing them to this so they can see what I'm doing and they know what daddy's doing. They can come at any point in time, like even during this podcast, they could jump down here and <laughs> pop in, pop up, yeah, right? You know, <laughs> and, um, I got no problem with that. I don't, I don't discourage them from doing that. I do ask for my privacy, but if they got to come down here, I ain't got no problem. So I share that time with them rather than trying to separate my time from wow. them on that. So what life hacks you got or time hacks that you got that you could share with anybody? And one, man, I echo that those sentiments, man, because as a child to see what your father is up to and not just to be, don't go behind, don't knock on the door, daddy's busy or whatnot, to actually come in and be a part of it. I think that's, that's important. A uh, couple of things. When we built this house, I knew that this was going to be my office. And over here, I'll show you the doors are glass, right? Yeah. Because I knew I was going to spend a lot of time in here. And I'm tuned in, dialed in and whatnot. I wanted my family to at least see me in the times that they couldn't, right? So the glass has got fingerprints, face prints from all of that, right? Um, I think that your background right now is a perfect metaphor for this, right? Because you got the, you muted the background, but you're in focus. It's tunnel vision or you, everything else is there, but it's kind of, it's kind of muddled a little bit, right? I try to, and here's about to be a real time example. I just got up, just walked downstairs, right? And so I, I kind of take that pause to know, okay, whatever I'm doing, if I'm doing this, the way that I should be, for the times that I should be, this momentary interaction shouldn't be catastrophic, right? You come in, daddy, I want to do emails. Okay, I got a separate computer right here. I could take this, like more often than not, I could take this moment in time and let you bang away on the thing, right? Let you bang away on on the computer. You want to sit behind me? Great. He likes dropping the pens through the uh, cable holes in the desk, right? It's like, can I drop the pen? Okay, you drop the pen. Okay, cool. All right, but man, I got to get back to it, right? So making sure that he always feels important. I hope something that I said resonates with somebody. I would love to do it again. But man, like I said, bro, I'm proud of you. You've always had your head on straight. The tenacity and your attention to detail and what you do and what you love shows like it just shines forward and uh, man, just, just keep it up. Oh, appreciate you Thank for you. having me. Absolutely, man. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I got to say, listen, I've done more smiling <laughs> on this podcast <laughs> than I have on hey, any of them, too, man. man. That's because I love you, brother. And, uh, hey, man, likewise. This, this is the mentality of black men now. We got to tell each other we love you, man. Because yeah. there's a lot of yeah. battles yeah. that we go through on a daily basis. And oh, yeah. we, we hit yeah. walls. Oh, yeah. And yeah. We, we just don't get that confirmation sometimes, you know, from another brother. Yeah. Huh. So, from one brother to another, man, I love you. I love your family. Everything, brother. So. I love you too. I love your family. I love the last time I came over to your house and y'all were in the backyard and the girls were lit up. They were all in their individual activities. You were at the center of it. And it left me with great feelings. When I drove away from your house, I was like, yo, man. I felt like I was descending a mountain, right? Like I had been up and I seen the Oracle, right? It was able to tap in with the energy, refocus and come back, man. So I know today is gonna be a beautiful day. But yeah, daughter, congratulations on that third two. That third two is the one that's important. You are officially an expert at this point, right? First one, you didn't know what was happening. Two, you were a little bit familiar, but still in certain third is a piece of cake. So, uh, hey, enjoy, man. And just keep doing what you're doing, brother. Let's talk soon, man. Absolutely, man. So, uh, yeah, you enjoy your time out today. Uh, We're going to get into these bars. And uh, like I said, I love you, appreciate you, enjoy your day. And anybody else out there, you know where to get a hold of me. Enjoy your day. Own your time. Make sure you own it. 
because it's yours. Don't let nobody take it from you. All right, and we're gonna leave on that one, all right? Let's get into these bars. Yeah, Hi. yeah, Rockefeller. We invite you to something epic, you know? Stocks and bars, watch this path I'm about to call Helping my people get this cash in a mouth so large You used to hearing people rap about pounds of raw Wanna hear this instead of that when you found it, huh? I'm killing it, no need to get the cops involved I do this with simplicity while you watching all I wanna see Everybody on my team agree Together I chat it, we gon' push our comma counter four I strive to give out different sounding bars I became the change that I wanted to see This game you used to have to pay for But my audible free Somebody gotta do it And I said that ought to be me I took my life experience and it recorded the beat This episode about time We taught you techniques For you to use as an enhancement We altered the beat Helped you improve as the results from the speech The sales of coffins increased Make sure you live, homie Can I live? Stacks and bars, stacks and